I've quoted this many times. Robert Hunt said in 1607, when he landed at Cape Henry and put that cross on the beach, he prophesied the destiny of America. The gospel, this is a quote, the gospel will go forth from these shores, not only to this land, but to all the nations of the earth. And it's just interesting to me, just, just as a little sign, <coughs> probably not, excuse me, probably not a little sign, but just I think four or five years ago, his, his remains were discovered at Jamestown. I believe it was a sign that God was saying what he spoke through this man is still speaking from the grave. But see, America has become the leading voice of the gospel ever. You know, Israel gave us the gospel, Messiah, salvation. That was their destiny. America's destiny was to be a trumpet of that gospel to release that message. Is it any wonder that Satan hates America so much? And is it any wonder, I'm not talking about now, you know, people, what I'm about to say, I'm not talking about the fact that people, that we need, we always need to move forward in the area of justice. You know, past wrongs need to be made right. I'm, I'm not, racism that still exists to a degree needs to be dealt with. We still need to clean that up. But beyond that, isn't it interesting that in this season where God is talking about the ancient markers and saying, I want to restore the destiny of this nation, Satan's trying his best to destroy everything he can about our past, even the good past, because, because they don't like our Christian roots. Demons, principalities, and those they influence do not like our Christian roots. They do not like our destiny. They don't want it to be our destiny. They believe just as much in Islam, Hinduism, atheism, all of these other isms, just as much as they do Christianity, they fight to say this is not a Christian nation and we should not have anything publicly to do with God. Why do you think they do that? Because they're inspired by demons who hate the gospel. So it's not about America that, that, that we're praying or crying out that we can have the most or be the strongest or have the, have the most money or prosper more than anyone else. That is all to facilitate our destiny. That is not our destiny. Let me read to you a couple of quotes that I think reference our ancient markers. George Washington said, and I could read you quite a few quotes from him, of all the dispositions and habits which lead to political prosperity, get ready, because you're not going to hear separation of church and state here, okay? Just warning you. Of all the dispositions and habits which lead to political prosperity, religion and morality indispensable supports. It is impossible. Get ready. It is impossible to rightly govern the world without God and the Bible. George Washington. John Quincy Adams said this. The highest glory of the American Revolution. Now you'd think he's going to say that, that we got our freedom. That, that's, not what he's, that's not what he's about to say. The highest glory of the American Revolution was this. It connected in one indissoluble bond the principles of civil government with the principles of Christianity. 
he was saying the highest glory is that a nation was raised up that was willing to marry with God. They say, we want to be a nation and a government under God, partnering with God, married, joined together. The principles of civil government and the principles of Christianity. Samuel Adams, he was character. Too many books up here. Samuel Adams said at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, which by the way has four references and the founding document of this nation has four references to God. The founding document of this nation has four distinct references to God. It calls him our lawmaker. Wouldn't you like to have that influence in Congress again? Yes. So that the idiocy Come on. and the selfishness and the power hungry. I just They are shameless, many of them. They, don't, they, could, they could care less about truth. He's referenced as our lawmaker, our creator, our judge, and our protector. After signing the declaration, Historians say some of these men wept openly. This is, this, is, this is a part of what they signed for the support of this declaration with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence. We mutually pledge to each other our lives, fortunes, and sacred honor. Some of them began to weep you know what I believe? I believe the presence of God was hovering in the room. That's why I think they started weeping. Because I know God raised up this nation. This wasn't man's idea. This nation was God's idea. And it's still God's idea. And by the end of this year, we'll still be free. We will still be free. We will be closer, moving more and more into the ancient markers. And we will become once again a incredible voice of the gospel to the ends of the earth. Revival is going to go to the planet. We're not, he said it, we're not going to sneak out of here. Jesus is not going to just, you know, just. How insulted must he be really? Come on, man. when religious leaders preach and teach that he can't do what he said he could do. There really won't be a glorious church that the gates of hell can't prevail against. That we're going to sneak out of here and he's going to rapture us out of here just before it all goes to hell. Come on. Let me just prophesy one more thing to you. He will not have returned by the end of this year. Just, just, go, just going to tell you that right now. I'm not telling you I know the day or, or the day. I'm just telling you. And if I'm wrong, we get to heaven, you just come up and you just point at me and laugh and say, you were wrong. But I'm not the least bit worried about that. We'll be here at Christmas. And we'll still be free. And we'll be moving toward the fulfillment of Matthew 16 or Matthew 28 and Mark 16 and the greatest outpouring of Holy Spirit the world has ever seen because Jesus cares about these souls and the nations of the earth that his daddy told him were his. And he said that when the kings of the earth 
take their counsel together against him that heaven starts to laugh, a laugh of derision. Then the father speaks and says, I've appointed my son and I've given him the nations and you better kiss the son or I'm gonna crush you with a rod of iron. So it's not the purposes of God to get crushed. That's right. That is right. That's good. Exactly. I've said it before, I'll say it again. You have any part of your theology that allows God to lose? You need to change your theology. Because it's an ever, his kingdom is an ever increasing kingdom which will not pass away. And the ancient of days is about to rule in favor of the saints and give us what we've been asking for because the blood of Jesus is greater than all of our sin, all of our weaknesses, all of our inabilities, all of our iniquities, and everything we've done in the past. There's been plenty of intercession and repentance over the last 25 years in this nation to have cleansed us from every bit of that. 